Sigmund Freud, born Sigismund Schlomo Freud May 6, 1856 to September 23, 1939, was an Austrian neurologist and the founder of psychoanalysis, a clinical method for treating psychopathology, through dialogue between a patient and a psychoanalyst, Freud was born to Galician Jewish parents in the Moravian town of Freiburg. In the Austrian Empire, he qualified as a doctor of medicine in 1881 at the University of Vienna. Upon completing his habilitation in 1885, he was appointed a docent in neuropathology and became an affiliated professor in 1902. Freud lived and worked in Vienna. Having set up his clinical practice there in 1886, in 1938 Freud left Austria to escape Nazi persecution, he died in exile in the United Kingdom in 1939. In founding psychoanalysis, Freud developed therapeutic techniques such as the use of free association and discovered transference, establishing its central role in the analytic process. Freud's redefinition of sexuality to include its infantile forms led him to formulate the Oedipus complex as the central tenet of psychoanalytical theory. His analysis of dreams as wish fulfillments provided him with models for the clinical analysis of symptom formation and the underlying mechanisms of repression. On this basis, Freud elaborated his theory of the unconscious and went on to develop a model of psychic structure comprising id, ego and superego. Freud postulated the existence of libido, sexualized energy with which mental processes and structures are invested, and which generates erotic attachments, and a death drive, the source of compulsive repetition, hate, aggression, and neurotic guilt. In his later works, Freud developed a wide-ranging interpretation and critique of religion and culture. Though in overall decline as a diagnostic and clinical practice, psychoanalysis remains influential within psychology, psychiatry, and psychotherapy, and across the humanities, it thus continues to generate extensive and highly contested debate concerning its therapeutic efficacy, its scientific status, and whether it advances or hinders the feminist cause. Nonetheless, Freud's work has suffused contemporary Western thought and popular culture. Winston Hugh Auden's 1940 poetic tribute to Freud describes him as having created a whole climate of opinion under whom we conduct our different lives. Early Life and Education Freud was born to Jewish parents in the Moravian town of Freiburg, in the Austrian Empire, now Czech Republic. The first of eight children, both of his parents were from Galicia, a historic province straddling modern-day West Ukraine and Southeast Poland. His father Jacob Freud, a wool merchant, had two sons, Emmanuel and Philip by his first marriage, Jacob's family were Hasidic Jews and although Jacob himself had moved away from the tradition, he came to be known for his Torah study. He and Freud's mother, Amalia Nathanson who was 20 years younger and his third wife, were married by Rabbi Isaac Noah Mannheimer on July 29, 1855. They were struggling financially and living in a rented room in a locksmith's house at Schlossergasse 117 when their son Sigmund was born. He was born with a call, which his mother saw as a positive omen for the boy's future. In 1859, the Freud family left Freiburg, Freud's half-brothers immigrated to Manchester, England, parting him from the inseparable playmate of his early childhood, Emmanuel's son John. Jacob Freud took his wife and two children firstly to Leipzig and then in 1860 to Vienna where four sisters and a brother were born, Rosa, Marie, Belfin, Paula, Alexander, in 1865. The nine-year-old Freud entered the Leopoldstadter Communal Real Gymnasium, a prominent high school. He proved to be an outstanding pupil and graduated from the Matura in 1873 with honors. He loved literature and was proficient in German, French, Italian, Spanish, English, Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. Freud entered the University of Vienna at age 17. He had planned to study law, but joined the medical faculty at the university, where his studies included philosophy under Franz Brentano, physiology under Ernst Brucke, and zoology under Darwinist professor Karl Claus, in 1876, Freud spent four weeks at Claus's zoological research station in Trieste, dissecting hundreds of eels in an inconclusive search for their male reproductive organs. In 1877, Freud moved to Ernst Brucke's physiology laboratory, where he spent six years comparing the brains of humans and other vertebrates with those of frogs and invertebrates such as crayfish and lampreys. His research work on the biology of nervous tissue proved seminal for the subsequent discovery of the neuron in the 1890s. Freud's research work was interrupted in 1879 by the obligation to undertake a year's compulsory military service. The lengthy downtimes enabled him to complete a commission to translate four essays from John Stuart Mill's collected works. He graduated with an MD in March 1881. Early Career and Marriage In 1882 Freud began his medical career at the Vienna General Hospital. His research work in cerebral anatomy 
led to the publication of an influential paper on the palliative effects of cocaine in 1884 and his work on aphasia would form the basis of his first book on aphasia, a critical study, published in 1891, over a three-year period, Freud worked in various departments of the hospital, his time spent in Theodore Maynard's psychiatric clinic, and as a locum in a local asylum led to an increased interest in clinical work, his substantial body of published research led to his appointment as a university lecturer or docent in neuropathology in 1885, a non-salaried post but one which entitled him to give lectures at the University of Vienna. In 1886, Freud resigned his hospital post and entered private practice specializing in nervous disorders. The same year he married Martha Bernays, the granddaughter of Isaac Bernays, a chief rabbi in Hamburg. They had six children, from 1891 until they left Vienna in 1938. Freud and his family lived in an apartment at Burgas 19 near Inner Stadt, a historical district of Vienna. In 1896, Minna Bernays, Martha Freud's sister, became a permanent member of the Freud household. After the death of her fiancé, the close relationship she formed with Freud led to rumors, started by Carl Jung, of an affair, the discovery of a Swiss hotel guest book entry for August 13, 1898. Signed by Freud whilst traveling with his sister-in-law has been presented as evidence of the affair, Freud began smoking tobacco at age 24, initially a cigarette smoker, he became a cigar smoker, he believed smoking enhanced his capacity to work, and that he could exercise self-control in moderating it. Despite health warnings from colleague Wilhelm Fleece, he remained a smoker, eventually suffering a buccal cancer, Freud suggested to Fleece in 1897 that addictions, including that to tobacco, were substitutes for masturbation, the one great habit. Freud had greatly admired his philosophy tutor, Brentano, who was known for his theories of perception and introspection. Brentano discussed the possible existence of the unconscious mind in his psychology from an empirical standpoint. 1874, although Brentano denied its existence, his discussion of the unconscious probably helped introduce Freud to the concept. Freud owned and made use of Charles Darwin's major evolutionary writings and was also influenced by Edward von Hartmann's The Philosophy of the Unconscious, 1869. Other texts of importance to Freud were by Fechner and Herbart, with the latter psychology as science arguably considered to be of underrated significance in this respect. Freud also drew on the work of Theodor Lips, who was one of the main contemporary theorists of the concepts of the unconscious and empathy, though Freud was reluctant to associate his psychoanalytic insights with prior philosophical theories. Attention has been drawn to analogies between his work and that of both Schopenhauer and Nietzsche. In 1908 Freud said that he occasionally read Nietzsche, and has strong fascination for his writings, but did not study him, because he found Nietzsche's intuitive insights resembled too much his own work at the time, and also because he was overwhelmed by the wealth of ideas he encountered when he read Nietzsche. Freud sometimes would deny the influence of Nietzsche's ideas. One historian quotes Peter Rudien Whitesky who says that based on Freud's correspondence with his adolescent friend Edward Silberstein, Freud read Nietzsche's The Birth of Tragedy, and probably the first two of the untimely meditations when he was 17. In 1900, the year of Nietzsche's death, Freud bought his collected works, he told his friend Fleece that he hoped to find in Nietzsche's works, the words for much that remains mute in me, later, he said he had not yet opened them, Freud came to treat Nietzsche's writings as texts to be resisted far more than to be studied. His interest in philosophy declined after he had decided on a career in neurology, Freud read William Shakespeare in English throughout his life, and it has been suggested that his understanding of human psychology may have been partially derived from Shakespeare's plays. Freud's Jewish origins and his allegiance to his secular Jewish identity were of significant influence in the formation of his intellectual and moral outlook, especially concerning his intellectual nonconformism, as he was the first to point out in his autobiographical study. They would also have a substantial effect on the content of psychoanalytic ideas particularly in respect of their common concerns with depth interpretation and the bounding of desire by law.